and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be speaking about a very interesting topic, and that is rheumatic fever. So this video that I'm doing today is actually a spin-off video or a sequel to the strep throat and scarlet fever videos. So if you haven't given those two videos a watch, I suggest you do, so that this video on rheumatic fever will make a lot more sense. But without further ado, let's get started on this video. So what is rheumatic fever? Rheumatic fever is a serious inflammatory disease that is caused by an untreated strep throat infection or scarlet fever infection. It can affect the heart, joints, nervous system and skin. And the disease usually appears in children between the ages of 5 and 15 and may be potentially life-threatening. Although strep throat is common, rheumatic fever is rare. Not everyone who has a streptococcal throat infection will go on to develop rheumatic fever. But if rheumatic fever does develop, symptoms normally appear around two to four weeks after infection. So from this definition of rheumatic fever, we get that it's actually a serious inflammatory disease that usually affects children between the ages of five and 15 who have had a recent untreated strep throat infection. So this is actually a sequel to the untreated strep throat infection or scarlet fever infection. So I do suggest you give those two videos a watch so all of this makes more sense to you guys. And the important thing about rheumatic fever is that it can be potentially life-threatening because it causes the serious inflammatory process in the child's heart, joints, nervous system, and even skin. So if we read this little speech bubble at the bottom, it says rheumatic fever is triggered by Streptococcus pyogenes and affects three to 4% of untreated susceptible children. So this is an untreated scarlet fever or strep throat infection that now actually progresses into a rheumatic fever infection. So what actually happens here in rheumatic fever is that the immune response against the streptococcal antigens can lead to a cross recognition of heart tissue, joint tissue, nervous system tissues and skin tissues. So what that basically means is that when someone has a strep throat infection, which is caused by the specific group A streptococcal pi genus bacteria, and we have the inflammation of the uvula, the tonsils, the tongue, the pharynx, etc., it also triggers, if left untreated, an inappropriate immune response against these streptococcal antigens, which actually cross-recognize tissues of the heart, joints, and nervous system and skin, and actually cause inflammation. So the body actually attacks these different areas of the body, thinking that it's fighting the streptococcal bacteria, but it's actually fighting its own tissue or self-tissue. So it's sort of an autoimmune response, we can say. So here the skin is infected, and inflammation on the skin will cause a specific rash, which is called erythema marginatum. We will have a carditis, which means the inflammation of the heart. We will have the inflammation of the joints, which is an arthritis. The central nervous system and the brain tissue is also affected. So these patients will go on to develop something called Sydenham chorea. But we'll explore all of those further as the video goes on. So now that we know what the basics of rheumatic fever is, Let's take a closer look at how one can contract the disease. So as we mentioned in the slide before, rheumatic fever occurs when the strep bacteria is left to flourish and the body's immune system begins to fight back. And the antibodies which are produced against the group A streptococcal bacteria begin to fight the body itself, damaging tissues and organs instead of the bacteria. And severe complications may result that affect the heart, joints, nervous system, and skin. These signs and symptoms of rheumatic fever. So many of these patients will suffer a fever, those painful and tender joints, most often the knees, ankles, elbows, and wrists. And as we can see here, this is what it actually looks like. It's red, inflamed, it's hot. It causes pain to the patient and loss of function. And pain in one joint can often migrate to another joint. The joints can also be red, hot, and swollen. The patient may also develop small painless bumps beneath their skin, and this is actually called subcutaneous nodules, and they are small non-tender swellings, often over the joint spaces. The patients may also have chest pain due to the carditis and inflammation of all parts of the heart, primarily the mitral valves of the heart. They can have a heart murmur, which is usually mitral stenosis. They can suffer from fatigue, they can have a flat or slightly raised painless rash with a ragged edge. 
and this is what that rash actually looks like and as we said this rash is called erythema marginatum and there occurs red skin lesions which start on the trunk and spread peripherally these patients will also suffer jerky uncontrollable body movements and this is known as sydenham chorea and as we can see in this video that's playing on the top left of my screen this is what a patient looks like when they suffer from sydenham chorea and it most often affects the hands feet and face of the patient these patients will also have outbursts of unusual behavior such as crying or inappropriate laughing that accompanies the sydenham chorea and this actually all stems from the inflammation of the brain so we have involuntary movements of the extremities and face which affects the speech and inappropriate behaviors such as laughing and crying outbursts so moving on let's talk a little bit more about the diagnosis of this disease so according to the revised Jones criteria, the diagnosis of rheumatic fever can be made when two of the major criteria or one of the major criteria plus two minor criteria are present, along with evidence of a streptococcal infection, which means the elevated or rising anti-streptolysine O titers or DNA A's. So when we diagnose a patient with rheumatic fever, we look for specific criteria. So part of the major criteria, we have Jones, which is the joint involvement, which is the arthritis. We have O, which looks like the heart, so myocarditis or inflammation of the heart. We have N, which are the nodules, the subcutaneous nodules, which we spoke about. E, which is the erythema marginatum, which is that rash we spoke about. And S, which stands for the sydenham chorea, which are those involuntary jerky movements. So part of the minor criteria, we have the CRP, which is increased, which is the C-reactive protein. It's a sign of inflammation in the body. We also have A, which is arthralgia. So the joint involvement again, pain in the joint. F, which is for fever. And E, which is an elevated ESR, which is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is also an inflammatory marker. P stands for a prolonged PR interval. Because these patients have a myocarditis, we will see a prolonged PR interval. A stands for an anamnesis, which means an history of rheumatism. And L stands for leukocytosis or an increase in the white blood cells of the body. So the diagnosis of the disease is actually made on the basis of either two major criteria being present or one major criteria and two of the minor criteria being present in addition to a throat culture, which shows that group A beta hemolytic streptococci so GABHS, group A beta hemolytic streptococci, which is that specific bacteria which causes that strep throat infection, or an elevated anti-streptolysine titer, which is actually that specific antibody which is involved in fighting that specific strain of streptococcus bacteria. So here we're looking for either the antigen or the antibody, as well as two major criteria or one major criteria and two minor criteria to confirm the diagnosis of this disease. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of rheumatic fever. So the goals of treatment are to destroy the bacteria, relieve the symptoms and prevent reoccurrences. Treatment often includes antibiotics such as penicillin to eliminate any remaining strep bacteria and a long-term antibiotic treatment to prevent reoccurrence. So people who have had heart inflammation during rheumatic fever may be advised to continue preventative antibiotic treatment for up to 10 years or longer. We can also administer a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug such as naproxen or ibuprofen to reduce the inflammation and pain in these patients. Corticosteroids such as prednisone may also be used if inflammation is more severe Anticonvulsant medications such as valproic acid or carbamazepine can be used for severe involuntary movements which are caused by the sydenham chorea. And if rheumatic fever is not treated promptly, the long-term heart damage, which is called rheumatic heart disease, may occur. So rheumatic heart disease weakens the valves between the chambers of the heart, particularly the mitral valve, and severe rheumatic heart disease may require heart surgery and can actually result in death if left untreated. So many of these patients who suffer from rheumatic heart disease will actually require a mitral valve replacement and this can actually be done with a biological valve or a mechanical valve. And that brings us to the end of this video on rheumatic fever. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notification so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.